One. Hello and welcome to Fish Wrap TV, episode 30. Today is Friday, September 17th, 2021. I'm your host, Janie Hansen, here in sunny Blue Earth, Minnesota, along with Q Lair for your weekly market update. Big story this week was the CPI report. We'll also cover freight, along with the ongoing inflation and natural gas picture. All right, Q, tell us more about that Consumer Price Index report. Well, it was uh, probably the most surprising thing we've seen in a long time, notably because it was weaker than expected, because you know we've really had inflation running through the numbers. With the PPI going where it went, was nobody expected it to be you know 0.3 instead of 0.5. Mm-hmm. Doesn't sound like much, but it's it really shows that there is a disconnect going on, and what is what is really coming has not hit consumers yet, okay. which is pretty scary if really you think about it. Con- uh, cushion on the wholesale side of things, yes. yet that it hasn't flowed all the way through to end use. Precisely, consumers. precisely, and you know th- that flows through right into the freight problem. You know, we've been discussing week after week. Uh, to, to this week, we had a new high in freight for a container from China to the West Coast of the United States is now twenty and a half thousand dollars okay, and what per was container. It before uh, one thousand to two thousand. Whoa. Yes. So it's it's ten x. And not only that, but then as we talked about earlier today, you know, there's a backup here in Los Angeles. There's a huge backup in China. Mm-hmm. It's still with these freight rates. So uh, the, the problem is, is that people are trying to get natural gas tankers okay. to, to, to get overseas. Uh, there is a huge problem in Europe. I mean, huge mm-hmm. uh, with natural gas, with okay. this Russian thing that we've been talking about the last two, three weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, Russia has told them that the, the gas backup is going to continue because they're still trying to get their stocks to where they want for their winter. And we all know about Russian winters. A little chilly. <laughs> Just a little chilly. Just ask Napoleon or Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought Minnesota was bad. You, yeah, you think Minnesota's bad. <laughs> Not you know, quite try, Sar- try, Siberian. Yeah, try Siberia. But, um, you know, gas is now 550 plus here in the United States, uh, hit 578 this week in December, which is, you know, it, used, it was under two, mm-hmm. you know, not, you know, 10 months ago. Uh, it's trading at $16 in Europe right now. Okay. And, and plus, that's what you said, freight is they're getting tankers for the natural gas is exactly. what's putting the pressure on the freight markets. Right. And a, and a natural gas outfit in the UK is closed because of uh, bad hedging. And a fertilizer plant in the UK has shut down because they will not pay these prices to, mm-hmm. to gin the ammonia for, for fertilizer like we've been talking about. So, yeah. you know, it's really a situation, uh, you know, where it's going to get real expensive for a lot of people mm-hmm. this, this winter. So, um, you know, no, nobody's listening to us in the Northeast of the United States, but, mm-hmm. you know, be prepared because, you know, last couple of years, nat gas has hit, you know, 12, 15, 16 bucks there and just stay tuned for this year because, mm-hmm. you know, if things get bad up there with, you know, and they can't get heat, you know, heating all the distil- distillates, you know, you could see a two, which would be like a first ever. Yeah. So, but what about grains? Harvest is just beginning. You hear how the market's reacting to the first combines rolling out into the fields. I, I tell you, it's, you know, I've been around a long time, and this is a real snoozer. Hmm. You know, uh, corn is sitting here at five bucks. Beans are sitting right there at 13. And, you know, that's, those are pretty good numbers. It's actually kind of refreshing with markets going crazy in other places. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, margins are going down in the grains. Margins are going up in that gas and, you know, all of the other distillates. So, you know, it's funny to see, you know, one negative, one positive in the same report coming out of CME, but there, there you have it. But yeah. uh, they're, they've, they've dropped the hedge. I mean, they've dropped the margins down about 10% uh, as of today. Mm-hmm. So that's so usually the first sign. Less volatility sign. and the markets have stabilized the a little bit. The sta- have really stabilized. And uh, we've been setting in, in pretty much the same half standard deviation for almost five weeks now. Okay. You know, with, you know, pretty much just, just a wiggle. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, wheat, of course, is, is still getting a little bit stiff uh, be, because of, uh, you know, what's going on in, in Russia because uh, they, they just had, you know, uh, unexpectedly not bad crop, but smaller than they thought okay. coming out of uh, the spring wheat areas. So, um, you know, everybody is, uh, you know, getting adjusted. The prices are getting adjusted. You know, hard wheat is continuing to run. So that's picking up the slack, like we said. Um, you know, this year, I mean, if you thought this year was going to be the big year, like 08 or 12, 
you know, next year is probably the year if it's going to happen. If not, then it ain't going to happen. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, just, just an interesting overall. Uh, I mean, the Fed is, you know, I've been around a lot of years. The Fed has not been this dist, you know, in, in the, the what I call fintech world uh, since G. William Miller, who is Jimmy Carter's you know, Fed chairman. And it's not just an effect of Twitter that it's easier to hear that chatter yeah, or. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, this was a guy that was so bad and, you know, we had 21% T-bills and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then they brought in Volcker. So talk about, you know, going from, you know, Jekyll and Hyde and that, that's about as big as it gets. But, you know, we got a situation here where the, the Fed is like, like we've been talking about, has lost control of this. And I mean, you've got low interest rates, but you've got, you know, high prices running, you know, the, you know, how can they contain Mm -hmm. because, you know, they, they have to raise interest rates. It, you know, it's, it's really the, you know, the economic theory that we all studied in college. But if they do that, then look out for economic growth. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're not between a rock and a hard place, as we see in Twitter. They're between a boulder and a hard place. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, any other things to keep an eye on in the week ahead? Well, you know, I, I was noticing that uh, not only with uh, KC going over Chicago, but we've got... Uh, oats has creeped up and put a five in front of it so you know you got to keep an eye on that and of course everything up here in the northlands you know had a dry you know summer mm -hmm. um, but you know you're showing people oats five dollars you know spring wheat nine dollars uh, canola nine hundred dollars a you know canadian metric ton yeah so some so, of those smaller yeah grains. and and it's funny because uh you know people are talking about going to peas and you know to mm -hmm. you know for this uh what do you call it yeah, the meat replacement, yeah, the fake vegan meat products. Stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because peas, peas are a big, you know, item in that. So, you know, there's there's a lot of people thinking about diversifying up here in this part of the country. And you know, thank God because, you know, like I said, you know, if you'd have told me, tw you know, 25, 30 years ago that we'd have had seven million acres of beans in North Dakota, I'd have said, get out of here. <laughs> I mean, you, but of course, you know, it, everything evolves and everything else, and people push as far as they can. Mm -hmm. You know the genetics, but uh, you know now we'll we'll see if you know five dollar oats or something. You know some of these other prices, you know get them to think about you know backing off the beans. Yeah, buying some acres back from soybeans. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know China continues to buy you know a little bit of new crop, but they're running behind. Um, we we just had the the lowest corn weekly export numbers uh, in in about five months. So, you know, these prices have squeezed off the Chinese. Of course, we're heading right into, you know, planting for Brazil and, and Argentina. So everybody's getting a feel for what, what's going on there. Um, the Gulf is opening up. So, uh, you know, that is, that is also taking some of the volatility out of the market too. Okay. So, you know, if, if, if the money runs to natural gas and crude oil, which it looks like it's going to, then this is gonna be a long winter for the longs <laughs> <laughs> and probably the shorts too yeah because we're just going to sit here and, and mark time yeah, parked because everybody's playing you know i mean natural gas look out i mean they are just throwing around some money over there yeah big time money so all right any other closing thoughts uh not really not really it's it's uh it's really a hurry up and wait now now the you know the harvest is underway mm-hmm so, and for producers who want to hear more about the outlook for harvest grain sales, check out the website, thefarmcfo.com for this week's Croptimize Hedge Report on the Croptimize Pro subscriber dashboard. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.